Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of applying Stokes' theorem. So Stokes' theorem states that the surface integral, and the surface over your S should be open, so the surface over your S is an open surface, of the curl of a vector field dot d sigma vector. In other words, what that is, is that's really the flux of the curl of V, linguistically, is equal to the flow integral over the boundary of that surface, the opening, so this is really the opening of the surface, of V dot t hat d s. That's Stokes' theorem. So Stokes' theorem is very useful when it comes to evaluating cur surface, integral, surface fluxes of curls. So let's see an example of this. So let's do this. Let's consider the surface. So here's our example. What we'll do is we'll consider, let's let S be the paraboloid. Z is equal to 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And z is greater than or equal to 0. So what does this surface look like? This paraboloid looks like this. Here's our x-axis, our y-axis, and our z-axis. And the paraboloid is going to open down like this. And if z is equal to 0, we're just going to be on the unit circle. So here's my surface. And the boundary of this surface is my surface S. The boundary of the surface S is the unit circle down over here. The unit circle in the xy plane is the boundary of S. Okay? So it is, in fact, an open surface. And the opening is going to be the unit circle in the xy plane. Okay? So now let's consider this vector field. Let's consider the vector field V. And what will V be? V is going to be the vector field. We're going to have a z here, we're going to have an x here, and we're going to have a y here. Now notice, let's find the surface integral over s of z, x, y dot sigma hat. Now what we'd like to do is we'd like to apply Stokes' theorem, but we don't know what. We don't see what in our flow integral, in our, our flux integral over here. Our flux integral does not have the curl of something else. So what we need is we need to find, to find a vector field W such that our vector field Z, X, Y is equal to the curl of W. And once we can define this vector field, then I can replace x, y, z with the curl of W. And if we can do that, this will become the surface integral over S of the curl of W dot d sigma. And that will be equal to the flow over the boundary of the surface, which is the unit circle, of W dot t hat ds, right? So we'll be able to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this w in a special form. We're going to write this as the curl of w1, w2, and then 0. We're going to treat the last entry as 0. So this is an ansatz. In other words, what we're going to do is we're going to guess the special form of what w is. I'm going to assume that w doesn't have any k components, OK? And so what will this curl be? This curl over here will be i, j, k, partial of x, partial of y, partial of z, w1, w2, and then 0. And so with this curl, so this curl over here is exactly equal to this, will be what? Well, what's the x entry going to be? It's going to be negative partial w2 partial z. That's the x entry. What will the j entry be? The j entry will be nothing, and then minus the, the, the z derivative of w1, which turns into a plus since we're in the, in the j direction. And then finally, the last entry will be partial w2 partial x minus partial w1 partial y. 
Okay, so that would be my curl. So what do I want? I want partial negative partial w two partial z to be equal to z over here, right? So if I equate those components, I can conclude that partial w two partial z is equal to is equal to what? Is equal to z with a negative sign, and that says that part that says that part that says that w two. So w two of x y and z will be negative z squared over two plus some function f, which I don't know, of just x and y, because I'm treating x and y as constants here. If I look at this next equation over here, I have that partial w1 partial z is equal to x. So partial w1 partial z is equal to x, which tells me that w1 of x, y, and z is equal to x times z plus some other unknown function, g of x and y. And so now, the last condition we need to be satisfied is that partial w2 partial x, so partial w2 partial x, this term over here, will just be fx, the x derivative of this function f, minus the y derivative of partial w1 partial y, which will just be gy. I need this over here to be equal to the last entry over here, which is just going to be a y. Okay, and so what we can do is I can satisfy this by choosing f to be zero. I can choose f sub x to be equal to y and g just to be equal to zero. That would be one choice that works, and that would say that f x y is just x times y. And so we can put this all together, and we can conclude that this w over here, this w, will be what? Will be negative z squared over 2 plus, plus what? Plus x times y. And then my w, uh, that was my w, uh, that's my w2, so I need to put w1 first, so it's w1, w1 comes first. So w1 is going to be what? w1 is going to be x times z. w2 is going to be negative z squared over 2 plus x times y, and then the third entry is just going to be equal to 0. So that's my vector field w. And so now what happens? Well, now I need to find the flow of this vector field w over the unit circle. So our answer, our flux, unit circle, is going to be what? Well, I'm going to have an x times z, x times z, comma, negative z squared over 2, x times y, and then a 0. And I'm going to dot that with t hat ds. And so notice that z is equal to 0 on the unit circle. So here's my boundary. Over here, z is equal to 0. I can get rid of all those z's. This is just going to be the flow over the boundary of s, the unit circle, of just 0. And then this will turn into an x times y, 0, dot t hat ds. And now let's parameterize this. Well, what's t hat? t hat, for the unit circle, our parameterization is cosine comma sine. Cosine of theta comma sine theta is my parameterization of the unit circle. And so the t hat for the unit circle will just be what? It'll be negative sine of theta comma cosine of theta. And so what we'll get is we'll get a integral from 0 to 2 pi. Then we'll have a 0, and then x times y is going to be cosine times sine, cosine theta times sine theta. I'll omit the k component since it's 0. And I'm going to dot that with negative sine theta cosine theta d theta. And now, of course, that sine theta will cancel. I'm going to get the integral of cosine squared times sine. That's going to integrate to negative. So I'm going to have a cosine squared times sine. So if I had a negative sign there, that would work. So I'm going to have a negative cosine cubed of theta over 3, because the derivative of that will be cosine squared times sine, evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Now, cosine cubed of 2 pi and cosine of 0 are both the same, so this flow integral over here will just be equal to 0. So we spared ourselves the parameterization process of this paraboloid and spared ourselves computing dot products, cross products, normal vectors, equations of planes, changing to polar coordinates by turning it into this simple flow integral. Thank you very much.